every generation believes that that generation is the wildest ever. Here we are in the 70s, and we're convinced that we're the raciest, the most daring, the most provocative, the most everything, right? I love the fact that kids today have made the 70s hip again. So in that spirit, we bring you a celebration of the 70s. Yes! Listen, I don't know why, but there's a couple of blokes after me. I need a place to hide. We can hide here, but I've got to go and do my act now. Your act? Well, that's better still. Listen, why don't we do a duet? Because they wouldn't dare lay a finger on me in front of an audience, would they? Although tomorrow was a dismal failure, Olivia was not discouraged. Cliff Richards eases the disappointment and offers her a regular spot on his weekly television series. Cliff Richard is one of the biggest stars that's ever been in England, I think. When she went on his show, it was a very big deal. Young man in the hot rod car. And as a bonus, the man she stayed in London for, Bruce Welch, is also on the show. In 1972, Olivia was asked to be the resident guest on the television show of British pop icon, Cliff Richard. Dream, dream, dream. Cliff was looking for somebody to do a duet with on a, a, one of his records, so I kind of auditioned for him. And I was thinking it was on the B-side of Sunny Honey Girl, this song. And on the strength of that, he invited me on his television show for one show, and then he invited me back for the whole series. <laughs> Admit it, you know it's true, and my love is here, so come and get it too. Don't move away when you know I really want you. Let me show. I pride myself on the fact that I kind of introduced Olivia to many public arenas around the world. You know. It was the first time she ever performed in Japan. It wasn't just backing me, but having backed me, she also used to do the, the opening half of the show or a piece of the show. So I feel quite proud of that fact and got on with her instantly. She was always asking questions and always accepting advice, which is another thing that's very admirable amongst people who are beginning. Quite a lot of people today, for instance, think they know it all, absolutely all. And of course they may know a lot, but they can't know it all. And it's very, it's very um, again, it's endearing when someone who's new, attractive, and obviously talented says to you, do you think I should do that? And you sort of go, well, I don't know, Olivia, I think perhaps you should or shouldn't. And it's, it's a very nice part of someone's character, I think, and she seemed to have all the right approach to it. Olivia's fans would love to have seen their professional relationship blossom into a romantic one, but it was never to be. Remembering that when I first met her, she was already engaged to be married to Bruce Welsh. 
Um, call me old-fashioned. That kind of was a barrier, <laughs> especially if you know Bruce Welch. But as I say, you know, and I sometimes say it jokingly, but I, I think I mean it as well. I think most of us, and I include myself in that, most of us men who worked with and around her were, if not a lot in love, certainly a little in love with Olivia. Sadly, very little remains of the Cliff Richard BBC TV shows that helped catapult Olivia to superstardom in the UK. I'm, I'm horrified to think that the BBC actually, I think, have destroyed all those tapes. Those were record-breaking days when Hank and Una, Una Stubbs and myself and Olivia, we did shows there which used to get regularly 17, sometimes 19 million viewers. And when you think that today, 8 million is supposed to be really good, 4 million is acceptable, you know, 2 million is fine. Uh, to think they actually wiped record-breaking performances. Olivia, that was really nice. Listen, uh, I thought, why don't we do a song together? Just in honor of Donnie and Marie Osmond, because it just so happens that I'm only just double Donnie's age. Uh, I, I hate to admit it, but I'm almost twice Marie's age, too. I bet that's got him worried. What should we sing? I'll leave it all up to you. Right here, Grandma. I'm leaving it all up to you. It wasn't long after Olivia's stint on Cliff Richard's show that she discovered America and began a lifelong love affair with this country. Then in 1971, I had my first hit record in England. Opportunity was knocking. What I feel I can say But my love is now solo and back in England, Olivia Newton-John had behind her a seasoned team of writers and musicians, in particular John Farrer, husband of her friend and former singing partner, Pat Carroll. When Bruce Welch decides to add a new band member, Olivia suggests John Farrar, an old friend from back home who's also a songwriter. John moves to London with his new bride, who is none other than Olivia's old partner, Pat Carroll. And I was living with Bruce, and John and Pat moved in for a couple of months, so we're all together again. Everywhere I go. As they continue to make music, it's a creative time for Olivia, her fiancé Bruce, and their new music partner, John Farrar. Farrar had been a regular musician with The Strangers on the Australian Go Show. In London, he was already recognised as a real pop music talent. John, what are you doing in England? Well, uh... About six months ago, I got a phone call from Bruce Welsh of The Shadows and he asked me if I'd like to come over and uh, be part of a new group that Hank Marvin and himself were forming. And uh, Olivia Newton-John, who was a friend of mine, introduced me to the guys. Olivia's solo career took off, consolidating the musical partnership between her and John Farrar. Well, my involvement started with Olivia. In the first year I was in England, in 1970, Bruce and I started producing it together. Well, it was If Not For You, a Bob Dylan song, which became a, a top 20 record in the States, and a hit in England. Then we cut an album, uh, and from the album, Banks of the Ohio became a big hit for in England and Australia and other places. But I don't think it got anywhere in the States. The relationship between producer-songwriter John Farrar and singer Olivia Newton-John is a very special one. And that specialness is reflected in the mutual admiration they have for one another. It's a great marriage because he writes songs that suit my voice very well and writes for me. And I trust him implicitly and I know that whatever he does will be a great finished product. I suppose it's because I've been working with her for so long that it usually works for her. I met her on a corner of Sunset Boulevard one <laughs> night. She was a hooker. <laughs> and I didn't have any money, so I offered to make an album with her. <laughs> See how these things yeah. happen? It was my fate that I happened to be on that corner and... Together, Welch and Farrah would play an important role in shaping Olivia's musical style. John and Bruce actually became my producers of my first record that I made. Bruce Welch was very uh, important in, in my early records. Down by the of it's his idea that she sing country folk tunes, and when she starts making records, he becomes her producer. With no original material of their own, Olivia and Bruce opt to go for a sure thing by covering a popular Bob Dylan song. If not for you, if not 
Their partnership hit pay dirt early on with a cover of Bob Dylan's If Not For You. The song makes the charts in both England and America. Olivia's career takes off. American Top 40. At number 37, a debut song by Olivia Newton-John. It's called If Not For You. Wow, that was my first hit record. International hit. Yeah, Bob Dylan's song. Yeah. And to think that I didn't like the song then. Really? Because I thought of myself as this, you know, balladeer kind of person. Now, of course, I love it. And it turns out that it's my husband John's favorite song. <laughs> That's cute. I think it's still a nice outfit. It's actually back in fashion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. From England, Olivia Newton-John. We took the George Harrison version, um, I believe. Yeah, we did. Well, they did. I didn't have much to do with it, really, except, you know, they said, we think this song would really suit you, and I went with their advice, and they were right. I thought it'd be great fun, because I had a sly guitar part on it, which <laughs> was always fun to try and do. Um, never really expected anything to happen with it. Here's Olivia in 1971, making an effort to fit in with the Germans on the show Disco 71. If not for you, babe, I couldn't even find the door. I couldn't even see the floor. I'd be sad and blue. If not for you. The Heidi Act wouldn't cut it on Britain's erotically charged Says Les, starring Les Dawson. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to a new series of Says Les. Dogs, dogs, dogs. I'm a bit worried about you. Why? You quite got a touch of distemper. <laughs> distemper. <laughs> you put your left arm in. Your left arm in. Your left arm in. And you shake it all about. Olivia was growing up. And don't think Les didn't notice. He booked her again for his big variety special in 1974. Where have you been all my life? And for most of it, I wasn't even born. <laughs> <laughs> you do the locomotion and you turn around. That's what is oh, this is awful. Sorry, Luckily, Olivia escaped the world of cheeky comedy. Things got downright nasty. female singer? No, I think it's... Well, they say that, but because there are less of them, I think it's easier. You know, well, not being a male, I find it very hard to make the comparison. What sort of music do you prefer singing? Is On the Banks of the Ohio very different from If Not For You? Um, it is... Di oh, I don't really know. They're both... Uh, if Not For You was a contemporary folk song. The Ohio is a very old folk song, but we've made contemporary, if you understand what I mean. Um, they're both my sort of thing, I suppose. 
I'm not really a belter, so I, I tend to stick stick to the more basic sort of gentle. some three months to get this particular record into the charts. It's our new entry at number 27 for Olivia Newton-John, a John Denver composition, Take Me Home, Country Road. Country Road, take me home to the place.
As Olivia's singing career soars, her love affair with Bruce Welch falls apart. As their career paths diverge and their romance fades, the couple's affair ends. After her first release and a taste of success, Olivia spends the next two years looking for a follow-up hit. It comes in 1973 with Let Me Be There. Olivia's career was up and running. Her next hit Let me be there in your won her a Grammy for Best Female Artist. She was a star in Australia, the UK, and now the US. Well, here now is a singer who was born in Wales, grew up in Australia, now lives in London, and has the 15th best-selling song on the American charts. Her current one is at number 15 this week. I'm talking about Olivia Newton-John. And let me be there. I want to ask you about that, that first time you hear your song on the radio in America. Yeah, I was driving in a car or a taxi, and I remember that. I don't remember where I was, but I remember that moment. I'm actually seeing it right now. I'm in a, I think I'm in a cab. I hear it on the radio and it's like, wow. And then uh, her English career continued. Having, we had a few hits until we got to Let Me Be There, which became a hit here. And that was the beginning of her big career here. And then it started to happen. Then in 1973, I had my first hit record in America. At 24, you begin a new romance with Lee Kramer, who becomes your manager. He encourages you to take on the US market. And your biggest break yet comes with the release of Let Me Be There. This next song was, um, thank you. <laughs> My very first big hit record. And, oh yes, <laughs> I believe that maybe you will remember this song, I hope. Surely you know. country female singer. You're also awarded Female Vocalist of the Year at the American Country Music Awards. It's the first for an Aussie, and you put a lot of noses out of joint too, didn't you? Academy of Country Music Awards. The winner is Olivia Newton-John. You are a long ways from Olivia Newton-John, but we're glad you're here. All right, thank you so much. We at MCA are very, very proud. Where do you think it goes from here? You've had a record that's gotten to number six in the English tra charts and in the top 20 in America. How far can you go on doing this? Well, I hope as far as, far as possible. Um, that's a hard question. I just want to get better, really. I, I'm not madly ambitious that I want to be a huge star or anything like that. I just would like to get better at what I'm doing. You know, I just enjoy the work. I love doing it. And I get... I travel a lot and I meet great people. I have a great, I have, I have a ball. Having such success at such a young age can really make you a little stale by the time you're 30 or 35. Oh. Do you think you'll be really tired of the whole thing? Oh, I hope not. No, I hope I'll... No, I wouldn't say that. It was 1974. Olivia Newton-John, the English girl who grew up in Australia and returned to England to find fame and fortune, was chosen to represent the United Kingdom in the Eurovision Song Contest. <laughs> Move 
to number two, and this is ours, United Kingdom. The United Kingdom. And now it's Olivia Newton-John, with that little surprise expression on her face. I don't know what that photographer must have said to her at that stage here. Olivia Newton-John's father, born in Wales, her mother was born in Germany, and she was brought up in Australia, so she's uh, really a worldwide singer. Remember her previous hits, If Not For You, Banks of the Ohio, Let Me Be There, a song that got into the United States top ten. This was a huge competition that required her to compete against other European singers while dressed in over-the-top blue chiffon. Now that I don't remember. Here she comes, Olivia Newton-John. Here she is representing Britain in the Eurovision Song Contest, where she pulled out all the stops. An elegant gown, sexy backup singers, and of course, the song. Well, a lot of us know that you didn't like that one song that you sang. No, I didn't. Uh, but usually with the Eurovision Song Contest, they pick the um papa yeah. one, so I wasn't surprised that... Oh, what's it called again? I've, um, Long Live Love. Long Live, thank you. <laughs> forgotten it. I wonder why I forgot the title. Uh, uh, and I often wonder how much better it would be if we dropped Olivia Neutron Bomb instead of more conventional weapons of mass destruction on the world's trouble spots. She certainly would have been able to defuse any warlike tensions with a, a rendering of her 1974 Eurovision classic, Long Live Love. Bouncy, happy song, this. Long Live Love. <laughs> Um, of the other five, if you could have uh, sung one of those, which one would it have been? That's a good question. I, from what I remember, I loved a song called Angel Eyes. Yes! Ooh, yeah, that's my that was, that, I thought that was a really beautiful yes. song. Angel eyes, I'll be beside you. Unfortunately for Olivia and the UK, 74 was the year that four unknowns from Sweden took the contest and the world by storm. I remember going down, it was in Brighton, and watching rehearsal, and ABBA were um, in the competition. Of course they were going to win. The song was so different and so terrific, and they were so bright and alive. But so um, it was pretty scary, but it's, you know, people from all over Europe um, send their representative with their song and then the public vote on it. And now it's even bigger, isn't it? The Swedes stormed the competition. Olivia came in a respectable fourth. Although you're hotly tipped as the favourite, you lose out to an unknown Swedish pop group called ABBA. And to maintain this international momentum, you now move to Los Angeles. Then I went to live in America, and since then I have had many hit records. So why did you leave England if it was going so well? Um, it wasn't going so well when I left. Oh, was that it? <laughs> I did the Eurovision Song Contest, didn't and? I? And uh, I hated the song I had to sing, and I lost <laughs> to ABBA. My personal life was in a terrible mess, mm. and I had a hit in America. So what better excuse to leave was that? In all the time that you've been there, how many years? Ooh, uh, 74, one yeah. time. 74 60, years. 70, yeah. <laughs> you haven't picked up the accent, except for record. I think you say record, do you? Record, probably. There's yeah. a few words I probably... How do you avoid that, though? I mean, we have people here who go there for a month and come back and say, hi there. I don't know. I guess I've always, I've always hated that. Mm. <laughs> In 1974, 26-year-old Olivia Newton-John decided to capitalize on the success of her popular single, Let Me Be There. Olivia packed her bags, purchased a one-way ticket from London to Los Angeles, and focused her attention on American audiences. It's a little intimidating, but I don't know, I guess, looking back, I wonder how I did it. You know, I was in my early 20s, but I just did it. And I remember I moved into the Sunset Marquee, and the first night I was there, I heard gunshots and <laughs> sirens outside my door, and I walked outside, you know, on the street. And I thought, what have I done? I was really scared. Well, you had a couple of modest hits in Britain. You went to America and you became the world's top-selling female vocalist. The move to America. Was that crucial for you, do you think, in making you make that jump into the first division? Yeah, I think it was important. And um, I actually went over there, and Helen Reddy and her husband kind of took me under their wing. 
and they said some very important words. If you want to make it in America, you better live here. You need to be available. And um, so I went. And so I went back to England, packed up and moved. Moving with her, boyfriend Lee Kramer and Pat and John Farrar. Olivia buys a ranch in Malibu and can finally indulge her lifelong love for animals. Very exciting. I was able to have horses. I had five horses. I had ten dogs. I had five cats. I rode every day, and that was my dream. Eurovision may have been a disappointment, but Olivia's voice was finding a brand new audience across the Atlantic. Nashville was calling, and the world of country was opening its doors to the Aussie star. My next guest, well, one could really say that she's kind of down on her luck, really, because... Well, her, her new record took, ooh, let me see, almost, ooh, four weeks to get to number one in the United States. And, uh, well, she's only had three consecutive um, million selling singles in the States. And her albums have flopped, I mean, completely, because, I mean, the two of them, I mean, they barely sold a million each. And so, because she needs the work and... Well, let me, uh, thank you, guys. She's looking at the cover here, a very pretty young lady. Her name is Olivia Newton-John, and she recently won a Grammy for her gold record hit, Let Me Be There. She is currently appearing at Disneyland, will be appearing at the International Hotel in Las Vegas with Charlie Rich, the 2nd through the 15th of July. This is her first appearance on The Tonight Show. Would you welcome, please, Olivia Newton-John. Here once again is the, the lovely young singer we've been talking about with her hit record, Olivia Newton-John. Olivia? I should have told him that I'd do anything if I could hold him for just another day, for just another day. His love is something I will not forget When I am far away When I am far away I feel the rainfall of another planet Another It's 1974, and Olivia Newton-John is moving away from boyfriend Bruce Welch's musical influence and concentrating more on John Farrar's talents as both a producer and songwriter. Well, without him, I don't know if I would have had the career I've had, because um, he writes such beautiful songs. But her next hit is one of the few songs he doesn't write for her. Peter Allen and Jeff Barry do. Maybe I'll hang around here 
a little more than I should. I Honestly Love You is a major hit, skyrocketing to number one in both England and the U.S. I love you. I honestly love you. In the mid-70s, she takes a song by a fellow Australian that he later said he told it, don't record it. it. It hasn't even got a drum on it. It'll ruin your career. She recorded I Honestly Love You, the Peter Allen song. I've known you really since... Uh... I Honestly Love You, which was the first time you ever came on the show. And uh, we all went, oh my God, isn't she beautiful? And that no, <laughs> and that song. And at that moment, that was the one I think every disc jockey in America fell in love with you. And thought you were singing that song Well, that was, to I them. was very lucky to find that song. That was a very special song, beautiful yeah. song. That's a career song. It definitely was. That's I, one. There are turning points in, in my career, and that definitely was one of them. What, what kind of fan mail do you get? you get a lot of mail? Um, a fair bit, yes. Yeah? What is it, mainly asking advice on how to become, I suppose, a singer? And, uh, no, generally, well, I have a few of them. People sending you songs all the time? Yes, I get a lot of that. Sort of tunes without words or words without tunes. Yeah. Um, we thought you might like to use these. And what do you do? I listen to them, and... Um, Did you ever find anything? Because if the story is right, the... Uh, the song that Tony Bennett did once I left my heart in San Francisco was sent to him by uh, some housewife or something like that, an amateur songwriter. Really? Yeah. Well, I'll keep, I'll keep reading him then. <laughs> yeah, I'll keep reading. You never know. You might strike gold. John Farrar writes most of Olivia's songs, but he also listens to every tape he's sent by songwriters, which is how he found the number one hit, I Honestly Love You. John found that. It was in a, a pile of tapes that were sent to him when we were still living in England. And he, he rang me up and said, you've got to hear this song. And it was just... It was such a mind-boggling song that you couldn't really do anything wrong with it. You know, it was just all there. Normally, there's maybe anything from 1,500 to 2,000 songs that I have to play. I only do it about once a year. Um, and, you know, when there's a good one, it really sticks out. And that one just grabbed me straight away. Peter Allen, he told me the story, he said he, he gets on the phone, he rings his mum in Sydney, he says, I'm number one! And he, he was as much of a joy for him as it must have been uh, for her. Oh, what, but what a beautiful song. It is indeed. Olivia? Well, look who's here. Oh, hi, Olivia. Hey, listen, how's your show going? That's why I'm here. This is really important to me, and I would love both of you to be on the show. I'm not going to take no for an answer, and nothing you say or do is going to make me change my mind. There. Well, okay. Yeah. Could we sing? Could we sing I Honestly Love You? <laughs> I think I just changed my mind. From the top of the charts, here's that beautiful Aussie, Olivia Newton-John.
special will be on NBC at 9 following uh, Bing Crosby. Who's on your special tomorrow night? We have uh, the Associated Press All-American football team and Dean Martin. And we have Olivia St. John, a uh, very beautiful gal, a great singer, and Diane Cannon, who brings it all with her. And uh, who else we have? Singing Angels. That's it. It sounds like a good show. Now, yeah. we have some outtakes here. We follow here. Bing. Follow Bing yeah. and his family, right? He always does the warm-up for us. <laughs> No, he's fun. He's Every fun. time Bob comes on, he usually brings the outtakes. These are things you will not see on the show. These are the goofs, the uh, things that went wrong in rehearsal or miscues or what have you. And uh, they're funny. I don't know what we're going to see tonight. So watch the monitor here in the studio. Bob, you want to roll the film. Here's a little preview of what you won't see. Well, let's just have an intimate little dinner. Just the two of us, huh? Yeah. Well, there's always the Charlton Hestons. Oh, no, dear. I mean, Hess is so disaster prone. Let's just yeah, I never thought answer. that would happen to Moses. <laughs> I was trying to save it. <laughs> Why don't we just? Have hey, I was, I was hoping you'd say that. <laughs> you think that'll fit? <laughs> The Bob Hope Special, starring Diane Cannon, Olivia Newton-John. The Associated Press All-America football team. Special guest star, Dean Martin. City sidewalks, busy sidewalks, dressed in holiday style. In the air, there's a feeling of Christmas. Children laughing, people passing, meeting smile after smile. And on every street corner you hear silver bells, silver bells. It's Christmas time in the city. Ring a ring. Hear them ring Soon it will be Christmas Day Soon it will be Christmas Day You have okay, the glasses. <laughs> Oliver Newton John. Right. Thank you. Thank you. I'm absolutely knocked out to accept this award from the Country Music Association, but I'm very sad that I can't be with you all tonight. It's a long way from London to Nashville, but I'd like to take this opportunity to say a big hello to all the friends I made on my last visit there. And I hope to see you all soon when I fulfill an ambition of mine to record an album in your hometown. At the moment, I'm touring Europe where there are millions of country fans. On behalf of all of them, I'd like to say a big hello to all of you in the heart of country music, especially tonight. Thank you all very much. That's Olivia Newton-John, videotape from England. Live from Hollywood, the American Music Awards. We start things off tonight with the award for favorite country female. The nominees for favorite country female are Loretta Lynn. They don't make them like my daddy anymore. Olivia Newton-John. If you don't, then let me go. Marie Osmond. The winner is... Olivia Newton-John. big surprise to me and I just don't know what to say but thank you very much. The nominees for favorite pop single are Terry Jacks, Seasons in the Sun. We had joy, we had fun, we had seasons in the sun. A 
Olivia Newton-John, For I Honestly Love You, written by Peter Allen and Jeff Berry. I honestly love you. Barbara Streisand for The, for the Way We Were. And the winner. Ah, uh, yes. I almost forgot. I Honestly Love You, Olivia, Olivia Newton-John. Newton something to say. I'd like to thank my producer John Farrow for doing such a fantastic job and Peter Allen and Jeff Barry for giving me such a beautiful song and thank you all very much for voting for me. Thanks. Listen, instead of me reading the three nominees for the Pop Female Award, let's have a few members of the American public tell us who they think should win. Definitely Olivia because she has Beside her soothing voice, she has a nice personality and performance. Olivia Newton-John. Olivia Newton-John. I really like Helen Reddy. She's new to me, so she kind of, she gets a point across. Barbara Streisand's my favorite. And the winner is... Olivia Newton-John. The other two ladies are so fantastic that I was uh, just thrilled to even be nominated. Thank you all very much again. The nominees for the favorite country album are Olivia Newton John, let me, let me be, be there. there in your Charlie Rich for a very special love song. And Charlie Rich for Behind Closed Doors. And the winner is. Okay. Uh, uh, let me be there, Olivia Newton John. Oh. Thinking backstage, if she won one more, she's gonna have to back a truck up here to load it off. Help yourself. Would you believe? Um, I don't know what to say again, but um, Charlie and I are gonna set up shop. I think. Thank you all very much again. This is an unbelievable night. We honor forget it. Thank you again. <laughs> I have the great pleasure of presenting this award, your choice, ladies and gentlemen to Miss Olivia Newton. Thank you very much. I've already had probably the most fantastic week in my career this week and now this on top is just too much. And um, I'm very... I'm actually knocked out to be voted by the people. Thank you very much. And it's especially fantastic because I haven't been singing in America for very long. And um, I've had some very successful records, and that's all due to you out there. And I'd like to thank you all very much. Thank you. For Record of the Year, Grammys, to artist and producer, the nominees are... Elton John, Don't Let the Sun Go Down on Me. Roberta Flack for Feel Like Making Love. Joni Mitchell for Help Me. <laughs> Olivia Newton-John for I Honestly Love You. John Farrar, producer. Maria Moldar for Midnight at the Oasis. And the winner is... Exciting. Oh, two Grammys, I Honestly Love You, Olivia Newton-John. Producer John Farrar. Jolly good, jolly good. Accepting the award for Olivia Newton-John is Art Garfunkel.
Very well, my dear. I Close accept the it on behalf of them. They can't be here, and I'm sure they're very grateful for the uh, honor. Thank He's you. So serious.